Hi, my name is Michael Barltrop. You can find me at Twitter at Mr. Barltrop, or you can find me at my website, whatbinder.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to use Google Sheets to create some easy descriptive feedback options. As you can see right now, we have a nice little setup here, uh, and some comments are being displayed up here. We can copy and paste them into a Google Doc, and that's how we give our descriptive feedback. So you can see that along the side there are some titles. This is telling us what the comment is referring to. This here is what is actually being input, and these are our options. So if we check it, it's going to pull from here. And if it's unchecked, it's going to pull from here. So you can see how this would be a very powerful tool to quickly give descriptive feedback for an assignment. So how do we make this? Well, let's consider first what we might want to make this for. We can have this for a round table discussion feedback. So now if students were having a round table discussion in your class, we could create some feedback for them. The first thing you need to do is think about what are some of the look fors? Filler words and false starts is one of the things that students often have trouble with. So here we could do strength and need. So now we've already improved on the other sheet here because we've given it a heading. So if it's a strength, we might add you demonstrated an ability to avoid filler words and false starts. You engaged the audience by using short pauses when you needed to collect your thoughts. And then if it's an area of need, we could write, please try to avoid filler words and false starts when you are communicating. These distract your listeners. Remember, a quick five second pause will allow you to collect your thoughts before moving on to your next point. So already we have some good ideas here. Now we could simply just copy and paste these, but if we wanted to have more information we might need to add a little bit more. So how do we get what we want in the middle? Well, one thing that people do is often create a data validation and choose from a range. And now we have a drop-down that lets you choose one or the other. And that's convenient, but it's not entirely what we want, is it? So we're going to delete that. We want to be able to use a checkbox. So what we need to do is click here under the checks, go to Insert Checkbox, now we're checking it, but nothing's happening. We do need a script. We can see that this sets it to true or false. So we can do if this, which means if true, if checked, then we want it to display this. And if it is false, value is false, we want it to display the need. So here, please avoid filler words, and when it's checked, you demonstrated. Now, just to go through this entire process once more, perhaps another thing, if we were having a roundtable discussion, is we would be looking for supported points. Each point you made was well-supported, 
with a direct quotation to a source text. Okay, that's if they're strong. And then if it's a need, when you are making your points, ensure that you are supporting them with a quotation from a source text. And then we can just simply copy and paste the checkbox down, but that doesn't help here. However, uh, because this is just going to be the same, we can copy it and paste it. And note when we copied and pasted, it turned these 11s into 12s. So it's just transposing all of those numbers for us. And here we can see the checkbox is working. But how do we get this section up here? That is a really good question. So what you want to do, uh, and you can design this however you want, but what I'm going to do is merge these cells to create a little bit of a bigger piece here. I'm actually going to add a nice border to it so it stands out, and I'm going to make this bigger. So we have our box ready to go. Now some people would type in and go equals this and space and this and that'll work because we could copy this and paste it in. That is doing what we want but each time we added a new row we would have to add another and. So we are actually going to use this function here. So when we put this in here, we just have to choose where it's pulling from. I want to pull from C11 to C12. And now we will see that that is happening. Now maybe I've written some really long comments, and I would like this to be a new paragraph. There are a number of ways to do this, but the simplest I've found is simply to push Control Enter at the beginning of your comments. And now you've seen it's come down a line. But if we want that paragraph, we need to Control Enter twice. And here we are. So now when we copy this and paste it, it's nicely chunked and paragraphed. Again, the checkboxes are working as intended here. If you'd really like to, you could put text wrapping on and this will allow you to see everything as it's going to look. That might make it easier for you. I am trusting the system though. So I simply clip it here. Now if we wanted to add a final piece, we know that we can copy the checkbox down. We know that we can copy this down, even though there's nothing there yet because I haven't written anything. Uh, we can choose that another thing that we might want to look for is time limit. A strength would be throughout the discussion, you spoke for a good amount of time allowing you to fully convey all aspects of this assignment. So if I check that, there it goes. And you may now realize unchecked is nothing. Sometimes you may only want something if it is checked. Maybe we don't want an area of need. Maybe we don't need to add that. This is something only if it was done well. Again, another thing for this copying this piece down is maybe they did a great job and you only want to let them know that if they did a great job we want this as its own paragraph so control enter enter and say you did a great job on this assignment this was excellent and that's a way that we can let them know but oh no it's not showing up here and that's because we only have it set to C12. Now, if you have nothing else in this page and you just want it to go all the way down C, you can just do C11 to C because I want it to start here and I just want to grab everything that's below. So now, 
that is exactly what is happening. And if I add something else, this could be something saying, remember to participate next time. And that wouldn't be an area of strength. It would only be an area of need. During our next round table, please participate or submit an audio recording response for one of today's questions. And once we copy and paste that down here, We are now seeing that if this is, uh, we'll actually just call this participation. So if they did participate, it's not there. If they didn't participate, this is coming up. And you can see that this is collecting everything that's just going down. Now, if you want to just future proof all of this, you could just copy this, select everything, and paste it in. So now we have definitely future proofed all of this and you can see that anything that we're adding here, this is already in play. So not a concern, but because nothing's going in there, it's not adding here. And so we can mark them. You know what? They, they were really great at avoiding filler words and they supported their point. I mean, their timeline wasn't so amazing but I did think they did a great job and they participated. So now I have given my descriptive feedback for this. I will copy it and I will just paste it in here. And you can see very quickly if we have another student who did use some filler words, uh, their job wasn't that great and we want them to participate more next time there's some more descriptive feedback. So now with a few checkboxes, students are getting very rich and very detailed descriptive feedback. And that's a very powerful tool. So we can see how we created all of this extremely easily and uh, really got a useful tool for all of our students to get feedback, for teachers to streamline their descriptive feedback process. Now there is more that you can do. Uh, if you would really like to, you can do a lot of things with conditional formatting and colors and layout. So I'm just going to quickly show you what mine looks like for essays. Uh, and, and here it is here. So I've got a clear button that will clear all of these checkboxes. That's done with a little bit of scripting. And as I go through a student's essay, I can say it was a multi-paragraph essay, it wasn't a hamburger essay, their spelling had some concerns, their grammar was great, their quotations were somewhat embedded, and notice that it's showing up, which I have selected here. Uh, good sentence types, a good amount of quotations, they didn't always relate to their thesis. They used specific details, they avoided unspecific words, they didn't put themselves in the essay, the formal voice was used. It wasn't excellent though, uh, there was some room to improve, so I can now just go here and paste that in, and students get very strong, very rich descriptive feedback that tells them everything they need to know to do better. And again, very important here at the bottom, it lets them know that they can build upon these comments to edit and resubmit. So this is the feedback you can get by using something quick like this. And how we start off is simply familiarizing yourself with the process. And once you have this, you can build your way forward. What I'm going to do is provide the link to this sheet to make a copy to it in the comments below and you can make your own copy of this and start familiarizing yourself with this process. And if you find it helpful, that's great. Please leave some comments below and let me know how it's going for you and what techniques you have to ensure your students are getting really strong and useful descriptive feedback.